Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Ground Branch. Today, we're going to be covering some of the features of this game that have really made me fall in love with it since picking it up. So for those of you that don't know, Ground Branch is a tactical realism shooter that is currently in pre-alpha. Um, with that being said, although the game is a little bit rough around the edges, there are some features in this game that I absolutely love and that I wanted to just impart the knowledge of so that you can make an informed decision about potentially picking up the game. Now, if you've played anything like Escape from Tarkov, you will be aware of several of these mechanics, but this game goes a little bit further than that in some respects. So currently you'll see me walking around in front of a shooting range and I have no weapon. And the reason for that is that if I go ahead and free look down, my weapon is currently in a low ready. Now, this is a really nice feature because obviously in real life, if you're walking around, you're not walking around like this the entire time. And if you go ahead and bring this weapon up to have it in view, you will notice that initially it's quite steady, but after a while it starts to wobble around a little bit and it starts to move a lot more. And the reason for that is your arm stamina. Your arms become more tired as you're walking around like this. And subsequently, your aim will start to sway a lot more. Now, a good way to showcase this is if I go ahead and put it down into a low ready using the scroll wheel, and then I wait a few seconds. We'll let my operator build his stamina back up in his arms. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to aim in onto the site that's 100 meters away. Now you'll notice there is a tiny little bit of weapon sway. And you'll see it's gradually starting to increase now the longer I'm aiming down sights. Now this isn't a new feature, not by any stretch of the imagination. Most games have this. But you'll notice that the weapon sway gradually becomes mental. And that is just like real life. Um, having done a lot of shooting before in the past, um, you know, if you are trying to ADS like that for a long period, you do, it does become a real challenge. So having a way to offset that while you're walking around is really nice. This also means if you're stacking up on doors or anything like that, if you're moving around with your squad, you're moving in a more tactical position. So you're not accidentally going to just slot someone in the back without realizing, you know, oh, sorry, misclick. Because this game is lethal, it's hardcore, and if you put someone down, uh, or if you shoot them in the back, they're, they're toast. They're probably going to be out for the count for the entirety of that game. So the other feature is not only can you put it in those two positions right there, but you can also carry it in a high ready like this. Now, the logic and uh, sort of reason behind doing this is the fact that if, let's say, we're just about to go over to there, and I'm stacked up behind a teammate, I can be closer to him without pointing a gun at him. Um, you can be in the low ready, but it's it's another way to hold the weapon more than anything. Now, that feature in itself is, you know, it's just a nicety. The next feature I wanted to cover is the reload mechanics. Now, the reloading, let's just go ahead and put a couple of shots down range. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reload, but I'm going to free look down slightly. And when I go ahead and tap R... He does a reload, but he places it into his pouch and takes out the next magazine. So you're actually retaining that first magazine and any ammo that was left inside of it. The next one is if I double tap R, you'll hear that he dropped the mag on the floor and quickly just reached for the next magazine. And if I go ahead and look down, you'll see that that magazine with the rounds that are still left in it is still on the floor. When it's all kicking off and you haven't got the time, you can just do that. You can carry on shooting and engaging and then after the combat and the initial like firefight has finished and settled down you can then return and pick up your magazines for later on into the uh the game now again this is another quality of life feature it's another real life feature and it's one that's really really nice now the next thing is the ability to walk run and sprint now obviously you've seen me moving around as and when i'm moving around i'm, I'm doing so at the walk speed it's a slow walk alternatively i can hold uh, i've got it set up as control but i've set it up as control so i can run um so this is obviously a faster speed and you can still free look around or alternatively you can sprint now it doesn't matter where your weapon is if it's in a low ready it doesn't matter it will always put the weapon up into the air so that you can get a full sprint going. Now, this is a lot faster. It's a lot slower because of inertia to actually stop. You'll notice that as and when I let go, there's like a, a gradual slowing. Whereas with the running rather than the sprinting, you're almost back to walking instantly. 
Think of it as like a, a walk, jog, and a run, essentially. You may notice... If I can get it to... There we go. You may notice there's picture in picture. So you can see that laser is showing up on the uh, target just in front. And it's also showing up on the screen just to my left. To show that I am, in fact, ADSing onto that. But this training area right here is really handy for, for just sort of warming up and practicing and getting your, your aim in, making sure that you're comfortable with what you're doing. Do you hear that? There's like a tiny little feature there where as and when you shoot the target, there's like a minor delay after you've shot where it takes the sound to travel back to you. It's so good. Little features like that make this game so damn immersive. Now, I was watching a friend of mine who picked this up recently. He uh, he went ahead and was running a canted iron, a canted sight like I've got. He was running iron sights. Um, I've obviously got a red dot. Just so you're aware of how to change that, if you ADS and then use your scroll wheel, you can flick between the two sights. I believe that's the default setting. I don't think I changed that. Another thing you can do at the farm here is you can actually go ahead and go to the different areas. So, for example, there is a plane here for practicing. You can go ahead and change the time on this board. So you can go ahead and do it like if you wanted to practice night clearing and using a flashlight, you can go ahead and do exactly that. But to go ahead and start this, when you come up to the top of the stairs, you're presented with this board right here and you can go ahead and increase the number of targets. You can increase the number of hostages or friendlies. And then by clicking start, you can then go ahead and do it. Now, we're going to go ahead and put this on here um, as we push in. We're going to go ahead and turn the power off. Now, we haven't got nods on, so we aren't in the best possible situation for a situation like this. You wouldn't really want to be doing this, would you? With just a flashlight. Yeah, I think we would have been absolutely toast there. I would never want to do this with just a flashlight. I would 100% take night vision. But even down to that, the ability to practice all that kind of stuff is amazing. Right, we'll go ahead and turn the lights back on by changing the time. We'll put it back to uh, sort of like midday-ish. Now, there is an indoor shooting range just inside of Charlie over there. I'll give you a quick look inside of there just so you've seen it and you can have an idea of what's going on. If you've got 16 people trying to practice and run drills and stuff like that you can go ahead and send a few over into here it's quite a cool idea actually to have a proper training system but if we head over into bravo this is the actual kill house now this is somewhere we spent a lot of time practicing and training um i'll give you a quick overview by going upstairs Now, this is a great way to actually train with your teammates and figure out what you're doing and how you're doing it. If you want to practice rolling tees as you're moving down corridors, this is a really good way to do it. Now, at the minute, there is only one default format and layout for this particular kill house. I would love to see in the future um, the ability to remodel it and adjust stuff or have it randomized, you know, have like 30 different layouts. But that is, you know, it's something that could potentially come in the future. The ability to come up on the gantry and actually watch people and say, you know, you're out of position, you're not doing this right, you're doing that incorrectly. Um, I think can really benefit people when you then go into a proper mission. And the terrorists are actually firing back at you. That can make a big difference. But having this kill house available to be able to do that and to practice with your team and your stack means that you can have a nice little advantage when you go to actually do stuff. Now the customization inside of Ground Branch is something that I recently covered in a, another video. I went over a couple of the things that you can do. As far as weaponry goes, you've got a pretty wide selection of weapons that you can choose from. It's not a huge selection, but it is a growing selection. At the minute, you are presented with all sorts of different SMGs, ranging from the AKS-74U through to like different variants of MP5s, um, MP7s. Uh, your customized saved versions will also stay in here. 
So I've got a suppressed MP7 that I've decked out there. And you can go ahead and customize these individually. If you want to move a specific aspect forward and backwards, you can do exactly that. Now, the red dot sight or the, the low rail that I've got fitted on the top of here. By moving that forwards, I've currently got it in a position where I, I think it's of most benefit to me. Now, if I wanted to, I could actually customize that and I can move that all the way back and just to sort of... Oh, I've lost it. I've taken it off now. That was stupid. It actually changes exactly where the sight picture is. Now, don't get me wrong. For a red dot sight like this, it's not going to make a massive difference. But when you start messing around with some of the other weapons and sniper scopes or the ACOGs, it can make a huge difference because it can limit your peripheral vision a massive amount. When it comes to sorting out your operator's equipment, there is a massive amount of different things you can do here as well. You can take individual pouches off. Um, you can move them to different places. You can put them where you want them to go. Um, but encumbrance is something that you do need to worry about. You'll notice that down here, I'm currently reasonably encumbered. Now, at the minute, it doesn't seem like there's too much difference made with this. I mean, there may be a, a speed element there, but it doesn't seem like your character gets tired more quickly. Again, this is pre-alpha. This is all stuff that is potentially coming into the game. With that in mind, there is something else I just wanted to cover today. Um, before we go ahead and end the video, I've gone over a few of the features that I've enjoyed. But this is something that I also think is really, really positive. Um, over on the Ground Branch website, they've set up a Trello. And on here, they've got the Ground Branch roadmap. Now, the, the roadmap is covering absolutely everything that they have completed in the game, that they're working on in the game. And there's a lot of really cool things. Now, initially, when I picked it up, I realized that you couldn't prone. And when I realized that that was the case, I thought, is that a design decision? Have they thought proning is not warranted in a game like this? And I really disagreed with that. And it wasn't until I sort of, I did speak to the devs and ask them, but this was pointed out to me to, to be able to show what they're working on, what they're looking at, and, and all the future things that are potentially going to be arriving in the game. So as you can see here, the first pass of the new stance prone is going to be coming to the game in the near future. That is something that they're working on. Uh, they moved this card from coming up to near future. And John Sonodeca, the, the dev, the lead dev, I believe, um, he added the card. So you can go ahead and see all of this to keep up to date with what they're working on. Now, in the next update, we're going to be getting new character assets, new weapon sound effects, an updated door system and the mechanics for the way they integrate. There's going to be a storage facility map update. There's going to be a brand new map, which is the rig, presumably an oil rig. There's loads of really cool things that are coming up. They're going to be adding in things like shoulder tapping, an armor system, melee action, insertions and extractions, because at the minute you just sort of appear inside the map, and hand signals, a player inventory system. The, the, the potential for this game is huge. It really, really is. I'm really excited for some of the things that we've got coming up in this game. Now, at the minute, the player count is reasonably low, and I'm not even going to pretend it's not. There hasn't been a massive amount of advertising for the game, um, and the fact that it's in pre-alpha kind of explains that. But with that in mind, I think videos like this are just going to showcase how immersive the game can be and how much potential it actually has. If we can go ahead and increase the player base, it's going to make that game so much better because of it. Now, at the minute, I am running all sorts of PvE nights. Uh, I'm looking to run some PvP nights as well. Um, and I'm doing all of that through my Discord. If you want to get involved, if you want to come and join us and play some of the games in a tactical manner, then uh, head over to my Discord. The link is down in the description below and you can come and get involved. Anyways, I'm afraid that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it does offer some insight as to what exactly is within Ground Branch. Unfortunately, for those of you that have stuck around this long and haven't realized, with this many keybinds, it is currently PC only. And I, I don't know but I'm not 100% convinced that it's ever going to get ported to console. But if you own a PC, if you own Ground Branch, come and join in with us. And let's have some fun in the game. If you did enjoy the video, please consider hitting the thumbs up. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay reckless and relentless.